Hey, hey, party people. This is a tutorial on how to render iridescent fabrics, and I'm going to show you a couple different methods. FYI, this is iridescent, a two-tone fabric that often has this kind of softly shiny surface. Not shiny, shiny, very slight sheen, depending on the base fabric. This is holographic fabric. It's like a rainbow vomited on some shiny metallics. Iridescent, holographic. Iridescent, holographic. Most iridescent fabrics are made like this. You know, one color of yarns is going along the grain and another color of yarns get woven in the cross. And then you see one color and when the fabric changes direction, you see another color, okay? So here you have this blue fabric and you'll notice that every time the fabric changes direction, that's the top. And then as the fabric curves down, it turns red. And then as it curves and gets flat, which is close to this direction, see up, down, across, then it changes back into this blue color. When you put it on a form, okay, you have this limey chartreuse green. And then as it curves around the hip towards the butt, you get this pink. And then around the curve to the front, you get this pink. But of course, like any other fabric, the colors are going to be subject to light and dark. And so you are gonna have shadow tones. You're gonna see these shadows in here like that you know, these shadows in here like that. And they are, you know, each fabric is slightly different, but typically they are a darker version of the two colors combined. Like look at this green and you can see that it's warmer than your typical green because it's got some pink in it and then it's super dark. Here, the shadow tones are this like super deep purple, blue, plus red, plus maybe some black, okay? So you get these shadows that are in the super dark areas. Sometimes, because iridescent fabrics tend to be on the shiny side, you will get a highlight color. Do you see in this blue, like the very tops of the folds get a lighter blue? And here you see that there are some areas where it's a really pale green. That fourth color is like a little bit kind of like um, optional. It really depends on how many tones you want involved, but there you have it. When you're picking colors, which one you should pick for marker, which one you should pick for color pencil, take a look at your fabric and there will usually be a dominant color. This one, the blue is the dominant one. This one is the green. This one is the peach. And this one is the pink, the, the color you see more of. I'm gonna show you what colors I'm gonna be using for this demo, but it doesn't really matter because when you're illustrating, you need to match your colors to your fabric. But just for example, I'm using this Cura Color alcohol-based marker. This is from Kuretake and I love their brush pens. I only have this one marker, so I don't know how great their markers are. This one is Persian blue. Long time viewers know I like to, when I'm rendering with marker, I like to draw on the wrong side and render on the right side. And you know me, like when I'm doing these marker demos, I try to match the colors with what markers I have as closely as possible, but I'm never gonna get like a perfect match because I'm not gonna buy markers for every demo. That's just bananas. And then I'm using this Luminance 6901 color pencil in, what is this, Alizarin Crimson. I When I render iridescent fabrics, and most of you know by now, I render almost every single thing in either marker or watercolor slash gouache. I will use a watercolor or a marker as my base color, but I will add the additional colors with colored pencil because I wanna get this softness, this graininess. There are very few crisp edges. I wanna get these soft blends. 
And so I'm going to use color pencil. And some of you may be thinking, Zoe, I thought you hated color pencil. No, no. I hate using color pencil for the entire rendering because that takes a really long time. But for details, adding texture, effects, specific effects, I love color pencil for that. That's why I have so freaking many. All right. So color doesn't matter so much by itself. It matters how you layer it. So this color might be too red, but when you layer it on top of the blue, it actually takes on the more purpley effect that this fabric has. And then I have my shadow color, which is this purple. This is from Lyra. You can layer it in the deepest parts to create those super deep shadows. And then I have a light blue Lyra for some of the subtle highlights in the folds. The next thing we want to think about is where to place your shadows and where to place your highlights. I have a video all about shading. It really goes in depth in shading. So if you haven't seen that or you're not great with shadow placement, please do go watch that video. Let's start with some simple shapes here. I have three kinds of shadow. I have shadows on the dark side of the light. So if my light is over here, then my shadows are going to sit on this side. You don't want these super skinny one line shadows. It doesn't show 3D-ness. You want a good third of the volume to be in shadow so that it looks like it's going around. Now, the shadow is coming from above. And yes, I do like to work with a typically like a diagonal light source when I'm creating a light source of my own while I'm designing and just kind of making up sketches and not just drawing from an existing reference. So things that are under the light are going to get the shadow, like the bottom half of the breasts, right? Breasts, they go up, they go down, the light hits them, this part gets the shadow, right? Yes, okay. So down here gets the shadow. And then the third kind of shadow is cast shadow. This A-line skirt will cast shadows on the legs. You know, if she was wearing a big old hat, it would cast shadows on her face. So those are your shadows. Now, if you want to place highlights, it's going to be the opposite of where your shadows are going to be. So again, if the, your light source is over here, you're going to have some highlights running on this side, facing the light. And then you're going to have highlights on the top. So the top of the bust. And then there's not really cast highlights. So let's render this simple dress first. This method I'm about to show you, you can do the same thing using watercolor, using gouache, as long as you wait until your paint is 414% dry before you start adding the color pencil. I mean, even with marker, obviously dries fast, way faster than any paint, but there is a point where the paper is too damp to accept the color pencil or any kind of dry media on top. So always make sure before you add dry media that your paper is bone dry. There's nothing here that says that this fabric is so shiny that I'm going to get any white highlights, so I'm not going to try to leave the white of the paper. If you watch my How to Illustrate Shiny Fabrics video, then you know that when I have super shiny, like PVC type fabrics, then I will try to leave some white to the paper for super intense highlights. But typically iridescent fabrics don't get that shiny. Like this one, I think is the shiniest example that I pulled for this video. But even then, there are no crisp white highlights. The brightest ones are yellow. I do not like this chisel. It feels super awkward. And I don't hate all chisel tips. I like my chisel tips to be a little bit rounder. I don't like Copic chisel tips. I like Prismacolor chisel tips because they have rounded edges and it allows me to manipulate and turn corners much more easily than something that's this sharp. Copic chisel tips are really sharp, so I don't like those. I do love their brush tips, so I do love using Copics. Chart Pack has a chisel tip that's really soft and easy to manipulate. Not soft as in like marshmallow soft, you know, relatively soft, right? I'm just gonna let that dry. Okay, so far I am not loving this marker, but anyway, moving on. 
and here's my light source. So I'm going to, this is my shadow color, that purple. And so I'm going to add a little shadow here. I'm going to shadow this whole side of the torso and the skirt and let that shadow be a good third quarter to a third. Remember, the reason we're using color pencils is to get these soft edges. So don't do a sharp shadow. Okay. Let it taper softly. Let it get all nice and gradual. And then the bottom half of her bust, not so much below the bust onto the stomach because typically breasts aren't, don't stick out so far that they're like awning and cast shadow onto the stomach. I mean, like if you're just Karabit, sure. Adjust your shadows to your body that you're rendering. And then you see the hem, I have it kind of curving in. So I am gonna drop a bit more shadow in here. Now I'm going to take my red and this is my secondary color. So I'm gonna get in here and blend out those colors so that you're really getting those intense shadow colors with the red and the purple. And then of course, the beauty of working with color pencil is that you can manipulate the intensity. So this area is super dark, less so. And then over here, like the center of the shadow is really dark and then it kind of tapers to less shadow and you get those soft edges and a nice blend. And then you're gonna use just the red to create your highlights. You can use a blender if you like. What did I do with mine? Dun, 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 dun. This one is from Derwent. It's, it works okay. But if you are really concerned with getting something smooth, then go ahead and use a blender. Like this is, it looks to me like an iridescent satin, and so it looks glossier and smoother. Whereas a dupioni like this is a little bit grainier, and so maybe you manipulate using a blender here, not so much over here. Again, it's always about observing your specific fabric, or if you're an illustrator and you're not going off of a specific fabric, just the kind of look you're going for. Just always be intentional with your choices. If you want, you can go in with just a little bit more purple. If you really want the differences to show up. You know, we could have gone in with a slightly lighter red. Yeah, we could have done that. And then the light blue, you know, just some small highlights, top of the thigh, a little bit around the neck you know, real subtle, not a big deal. And then I would go in with my pencil, clean up my edges. If you really wanted to make sure your style lines popped out, you could do it in that blue, that light blue. If you wanna keep things more subtle, you can use a pencil. Now let's try something with a little bit more drape and use this color story. There's my light source. I wanna do this dirndl skirt, okay? What's the difference between a dirndl and a circle skirt? A dirndl has all the gathers around the waist to get the fullness and a circle skirt, you won't have any gathers because the pattern looks like this. Like literally, there's your waist, there's your hem. I'm using a Propic. This is one of the random markers I'd never heard of before that I picked up in Poland. Still haven't tested it too much yet, but no time like the present. And yeah, not a perfect color match, but whatever. <laughs> you guys get what I'm trying to do here, right? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd love to have an, ex you know, an excuse to go out and buy all the markers, but my God, I would run out of money so fast. <laughs> I've pulled this color and I'm going to layer these to create these super deep shadows. And then I'm going to use this color as the secondary color. Do you see the ones around here? You know, you don't really see much in the way of highlights, but this light, this green is so light that I'm gonna use a white and kind of blend things out so that it doesn't look pure white, but it has a softer highlight appearance. 
Let's just dry it. Yeah. I'm gonna start with the secondary color, which is this pink color. This is actually a watercolor pencil. And if you like using watercolor pencils with your color pencil work, that's fine. I know tons of people who do that. It en ends up looking beautiful. Just remember, you can never get water on it now because it will react, right? So just keep that in mind. So this is my light source. And so, oh dang. So this is my light source. So it's like, it's gonna be like highlight, 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 highlight. You know, every time it folds up and goes over, the color changes. And so I want to emphasize that. So it's like changing direction, changing direction, changing direction, changing color, changing color, changing color like that, right? Say that five times fast. I want the parts that are facing the light to get that pink color. And then again here, as it bubbles out, I want that pink color changing direction changing direction that pink color not so much on the inside that's going to be more shadow and then here a little bit not as much and then here as it starts facing on a test scrap i did try using um like a marker blender with the alcohol and it just ended up too much it blended too much and it started making its own colors so i think using a dry blender like this is going to get that soft blendy result that looks more like this category of fabrics and then and then and then and then and then the deeper shadows are going to reside here you know how facebook tells you like Three years ago, you posted this thing. The other day, what they, <laughs> I was kind of laughing because what they shared with me was this little video clip I had posted. And it's like a, my original color pencil video from way back in the day that's in my different media playlist where I was like, the best eraser in the world is time travel. Work slowly and carefully. And you're like, Zoe, it's taking too damn long. Well, you know what takes a really long time? Doing things over again. So I will take this time to repeat that. <laughs> Behind the drape gets the shadow. And you know, these kinds of skirts, it just looks a little bit organic and better if the drapes are a little bit uneven as opposed to like perfectly drawn out drapes, especially when you have a walking pose like this figure was. Now I'm gonna take this green, the lime peel from Prismacolor. And yeah, you do want a color pencil with a lot of color payout, like Luminance, the Caran d'Ache Luminance, like Prismacolor for this kind of work because you're layering on top of markers, right? Do I want any highlights? Maybe just a couple. And then I'm gonna take this pencil. These are Faber-Castell Jumbo. The graphite is just the regular graphite, but uh, the barrel is bigger than your average barrel. And I just like how it feels in my hand. This one is the 6B. You don't want gathers like that where it looks like that because the gathers look super flat. If you have super flat gathers or they're pressed down real flat or they're tucks, then you want it to look like this. But if you have a bunch of gathers, you're gonna see the silhouette of the gathers going into the waistband. When it comes to painting, you can paint it like this where you, draw, you choose your dominant color, you lay it down with your wet media, wait for the whole thing to become 786% dry, and then layer your color pencils on top. Also, with painting, you can employ the wet on wet method. Wet on wet is when you put wet things on top of other wet things. Generally, wet paints on top of already wet paper to get softer edges. This is a more challenging way to paint for most people. So if you don't get it right the first 12, 13, 
71 times. Don't beat yourself up. Get back on the horse. I swear this is way less painful than literally falling off a horse. Here is what I do to get the soft edges. With wet on wet, the more water there is on the, on the paper, the more your colors are gonna swim. With iridescent fabrics, you don't want the colors to go everywhere. You want to control the color, but you want the soft edges. So for iridescent fabrics, I only put down a little bit of water or I let it just kind of dry off so that it's just damp. And then I lay down the paint and let the paint go to the edges and let it just kind of dry soft. And you might have to layer things a few times and don't add shadows when it's the paint is super wet because you're not really gonna see it. It's just gonna start spreading. You, if you want the shadows with the soft edges, you wanna wait until your paint, your base color paint is just damp so that it'll soften and spread but not absorb and spread the paint everywhere. So I'm adding the magenta I'm trying to create the soft edges of where the fabric turns chartreuse, turns green. And then I'm waiting a little bit and I'm adding the shadows of the magenta. And then I add the green and soften the edges of the green. So like you kind of have to manipulate the edges of where the color changes so that you get a nice soft transition. It's okay to overlap the color a little bit because there are areas on the dress where the color, where you kind of see both colors happening at the same time. When it comes to this kind of work, I like to make sure I have several paintbrushes and I have one that continuously remains clean of paint and it's just wet. And whenever I just wanna add a water, I use that brush without having to wait to clean it off. Cause you want to be working on all these things when everything is a little bit damp and wet. And then I have a one brush where it's the magenta color always, okay, whether it's the shadow color, the regular magenta color, one brush for that. And then another brush for all the green, okay? So that you're constantly have these brushes with the color and the water and you're not wasting time rinsing brushes while things are wet and drying because you want to work out all these things while your paper is still damp. And then when your paper, again, is 618% dry, you could start adding some dry media. If you want to punch up the color in a few areas, if you want to blend it out a little bit more, or if you're happy with the paint job and you just want to go in there and with a pencil and add your seams, add your beading, whatever, you know, whatever else to the dress, make sure your paper is 412% dry. And that is how I do iridescent fabrics. If you want videos that will help you with iridescent, again, go watch my shading tutorial where I go, where I go over like evening gown shapes and pants shapes and faces and how to shadow all those. Go watch my how to render shiny fabrics video. That's, you know, they're closely related. So that could probably help you. And then I also have my shading basics playlist where I just go over different media and how to shadow basic shapes with different mediums. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today or just enjoyed watching me draw and paint and color and stuff. Uh, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And remember, hashtag always be practicing, hashtag practice not magic, hashtag especially wet on wet. It can be very tricky. Hashtag if your first one sucks, you're right on track. And I will see you in the next video.